this demo of Cloudflare for Teams, we're going to contrast traditional methods of network and application access with zero trust controls available to users in Cloudflare. We'll begin with a classic web access scenario for a self-hosted application like Jira. Then we'll show how our Warp Gateway client can manage access to a private IP range. Finally, we'll see how our platform can seamlessly manage access to non-web applications with browser-based SSH. Let's hop in. I've onboarded multiple applications with outbound tunnels to Cloudflare's Edge. Once I put my resources behind Cloudflare, it'll apply strong, consistent authentication methods to all types of SaaS and legacy applications with zero trust rules. Once I've selected my preferred IDP and federated the appropriate user groups, I can enforce device security posture like country of origin, source IP, the use of a gateway client, and even the use of an endpoint security solution on the device. When users remotely authenticate to on-site resources, the go-to solution has usually been a VPN, which I've configured here on the left. Let's identify where this kind of solution falls short so we can show how Cloudflare improves on it on the right. Inside the legacy setup, this user is going to access a self-hosted Jira application by first authenticating through an open VPN client. Instead of authenticating to the resource itself, this user is getting access to a network which represents a significant security issue if it's improperly configured. Once I log in, I select my Jira bookmark, which takes me to the homepage. However, I'm gonna start poking around in my network and I'm gonna see what's available to my device. I'm running a port scanner across the subnet that I authenticated to, and I'm seeing some interesting results here besides Jira, namely the firewall that controls my VPN access. This kind of lateral movement is common in legacy solutions, and you might not want users poking around resources they shouldn't have access to, especially not this firewall I'm about to log into. While inside, I want to point out another security vulnerability. I've had to configure a rule to enable the open VPN port through my network. And generally, the fewer holes I have in my firewall, the better. Now that we've laid out some clear issues with legacy VPN solutions, let's switch over to my native device and see how Cloudflare does it. As I showed you earlier, I'm also managing a self-hosted Jira application on Cloudflare. Rather than use a VPN client, I've configured a Cloudflare tunnel on the back end, which enables my users to remotely authenticate to this privately hosted resource and only this resource from a URL. The security posture elements also come into effect now. One of the requirements here is that my device have an active warp client and we can see I'm denied access until I enable it. Another benefit of Cloudflare managing my self-hosted Jira is that I don't need to enable any firewall policies to permit user traffic. Everything's handled on Cloudflare's side. And now that I'm inside a Jira, we can see that when I run a port scan against the URL, I'm only provided the ports that the Cloudflare tunnel has opened on its end. Anything specific to the resource remains invisible to anyone on the outside. Another way to manage access to this service is by using Cloudflare to route traffic to a private IP, like a VPN. Cloudflare leverages its massive global network and resilient gateway design to provide users a zero trust environment within private IP ranges in a way that preserves the user experience. Let's take a look at how this works. Back inside the admin console, we can see that by default, Cloudflare excludes most private IP ranges from warp and split tunnels it instead. By removing certain IP ranges from this list, we force that traffic to be routed through Cloudflare. In addition, our network tab helps us apply identity-based firewall rules for this traffic, letting us maintain the same level of security without sacrificing convenience. Back in the legacy environment, I previously accessed Jira through its bookmarked IP address over OpenVPN. I'm showing here that I've disabled OpenVPN, and I have no access to Jira now that it's turned off. Now I'm going to activate the warp client and we'll see I have the exact same access I had before, but without any clunky login process getting in the way. In addition, the firewall that I could access before over OpenVPN is now unavailable to me in end user. By using Cloudflare's zero trust platform to manage my application, I've made my user experience faster, more secure, and more reliable. Cloudflare Warp can also manage access to private IPs in the context of non-web applications. Here, in a different device, I'm going to use Cloudflare Warp to enable me to use remote desktop protocol on a device that needs to be tightly controlled. 
I attempt to access it with warp disabled, and predictably, I can't get to it. When I enable warp and try again, Cloudflare routes me to the host, and I have access to the system. Cloudflare also enables users to render an SSH client in a browser. This is a huge step forward for zero trust implementations, which usually have a hard time applying the same access protections that are available for web apps like Jira. It's as simple as establishing a Cloudflare tunnel on a resource you want to manage, and then enabling browser rendering in the settings. Remote SSH access in a production environment requires a carefully managed set of rules and hardware on both ends. But with Cloudflare, I can render the SSH client in a browser like it's a native web application. As I log in, we can see on the left that it has similar access requirements to our self-hosted Jira. My client is on, and I need to have a specific endpoint protection client enabled on my device. I also want to point out that I've configured this device posture setting for CrowdStrike in a way that prevents bad actors from circumventing it by just creating a bogus extension, as you can see with the hash value at the bottom. One thing this application requires, however, is a hard key, which this account has not enabled yet. Despite otherwise meeting the criteria, Cloudflare denies my access. I'm going to log in as another user who has configured their hard key. Once we're through Cloudflare access, we need to authenticate into the device itself. And when we're done with that, Cloudflare renders the SSH terminal in the browser. Cloudflare for Teams has an exceptional reach in the context of onboarding applications into a zero-trust environment, and it enables users to replace their existing VPN client with a solution that also provides all the benefits of using Cloudflare. Thanks for watching.